Track wrestling here in Cedar Falls, Iowa with Air Force coach Sam Barber. Air Force in town for a duel against Northern Iowa. It's been an interesting week of travel, weekend of travel for yeah. you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've gone through to get here to Cedar Falls? Yeah, it's been great. You know, it's kind of, we, we, uh, we love these things to adapt and overcome, but we had a small blizzard that hit Colorado Springs as we were trying to get to Laramie last night for our dual meet. And uh, it took us two and a half hours to go 10 miles. So, our, uh, you know, good thing we had a good Air Force vet, you know, driving our bus because he was, uh, we bobbing and weaving, you know, in and around cars that were in the ditch, and um, he got us there. But you know, it's normally about a three-hour drive, and it was six and a half, you know, six and a half-hour drive up to Laramie. 23 years of coaching, I've never been late for a dual meet, so there's always there's still a lot of first for you to have. It doesn't matter how long you've been in this game. And uh, we got up there, uh, you know, about an hour late. Got guys they had to get down the weight real quick. We jumped on the scale, and we we're able to start the dual meet. Um, incredible actually based on what the traffic was and the weather was that we only started to do meet an hour and 10 minutes late so headed back to Denver after that got in about one o'clock in the morning these guys got up you know pretty early as we headed to the airport you know to get here to Iowa and, you know we're here and the guys are excited about the opportunity to compete tomorrow we were talking off camera a little bit about life in a service academy and how it's different than most of the other college programs out there can you describe what's different? Can you, to, to use your term, demystify some of the things, maybe some of the perceptions that are out there? Yeah, I think the, you know, some of the perceptions out there is restrictive. Um, you know, um, uh, it's tied to Hollywood a little bit. You know, so I would tell people all the time, and I think people of my generation understand it. But like, it's uh, it's not Full Metal Jacket. You know, have you seen that movie? That's not that's not who we are. You know, and it's not. Uh, so those types of things, that that's not the existence we live at the United States Aerospace Academy. It's not what it's like at service academies. It's, um, you know, we're a volunteer, we're a volunteer military organization, so people sign up to be part of what we do. You know, 15,000 applicants a year for 1,000 spots. So it's some, the opportunity is incredibly valuable and, 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 and revered and sought out by people. So it's, uh, it's an incredible place to be and a military experience. A military service academy education is incredible. The things that you get to do, the opportunities that are put in front of you, you won't have it other places, you know. Uh, opportunities to learn, learn other languages, opportunities to jump out of airplanes, opportunities to fly airplanes, opportunities to ride in F-16s, um, opportunities for us to travel to competition um, in a C-130 and stuff like that. So the opportunities that they, we provide for people uh, and where it puts you, it's incredible, you know, the big picture. The idea that you're getting a, entirely a full ride scholarship, you know, for a college education plus a paycheck a guaranteed job when you graduate so like those types of things and who you get to become you know who you get to become you know we're we're about leadership we're about character we're about integrity so we care about the officers we're producing when you graduate from the Air Force Academy you're gonna go work for the Air Force so we have a vested interest in the products we're producing to put in our own organization so what we provide um, you know how we provide it uh, eight to one student to uh, professor ratio so, like, unbelievable attention you're going to get from your professors. Uh, World-class facilities. We have a format wrestling room, you know, with unbelievable facilities for weight training, for, for weight management and our sports science side of things, for nutrition with, our, with the meals that they provide for us in athletics, for medical training. For, it's just like, it, there's just the resources we have behind it that these guys get, that all 4,000 cadet, cadets get at the Air Force Academy is incredible. So, um, I think once you get there and if you saw it, you know, most time when we bring people on campus, especially that we're talking about recruiting, is that our big thing is we've got to get you on campus because once you see it, I guarantee it's not going to meet the perceptions you had before you got here. We're talking 18, upwards of 18 credit hours per semester, and these guys have jobs, and you're juggling that with everything that goes into being a Division One athlete. How do guys do it? How do they manage the time? You know, they're incredible at it. You know, I think that's, you know, I, I look at our guys every single day when they come to practice and I'm just like in awe of what they do. And, and it's, um, yeah, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for about 23 years. And I've been around 18 to 24 years old. And like their productivity, their time management, their commitment to, um, and, I, and these, they're not just, you know, they're not just going through the motions and whatever they do, they have a commitment to excellence. So you have a guy here with us today that's nearly a 4.0, you know, at the Air Force Academy. He's a major, he has a major impact in his squadron and he's competing for us here. He's starting for us, he'll wrestle for us tomorrow night against you and I. So, and he brings it every single day. So their commitment, their, their, uh, their work ethic, their time management, and um, 
their, their, their drive and desire is incredible. And it's like, that's if, if you're a parent and, uh, and, and, and that's who you're striving, you know, like who your son becomes through this experience at this institution is incredible, you know. And if you're a young man looking to like what you want to be in your life and it's not, you're not just going to place a dollar sign on it, how much money you're going to make, but actually who you're going to become uh, and what you're going to do through selfless service to your country. Um, you know, there's no, it's incredible that the opportunities they have and the challenges they've taken and what they do every day to balance it. And we're still competing at an unbelievably high level. When, you know, most of your guys using wrestling as a, as a tool for something else in their life, how do you measure success as a program? So I think, you know, we talk about this a lot lately, but, you know, the number one thing we're going to measure success in our program right now is by effort, attitude, and execution, you know. So how hard do we fight? How hard do we work? You know how much how much skin in the game we have, and you know the execution piece. If we're working on stuff in practice, are we seeing that in competition? Are you growing there? And it's it's really about the process. You know, it's results driven. We want to be, we want to produce all Americans. We want to produce national champions. We want to be a top 25 team, but we focus on the process every single day. And we're going to measure ourselves, weigh and measure ourselves on how we did today, and we're, our work, our attitude, and our execution, and are we getting better? And I think for us. Uh, the guys are bought into that, and, we're, and we are getting better. And it, that model works in other, other areas of your life, all right? If you can focus on the process, you can focus on your effort, your attitude, and how well you do your job, and if you're getting better every day, you can apply that to other areas of your life. And that's how we measure success in our program. Talking about those success stories, those are stuff that play out, those are things that play out behind the scenes that we don't get to see about, see, yeah. you know, tuning in or, or checking out box scores every week. What are some of the best success stories that you've had in the program? What are some of the best that are going on right now? I think it, there are, so every single graduate's a success story. And I think if you're a wrestling fan, if you follow our program, you remember names like Josh Martinez. You know, you remember names like Cole Von Olam, who's a three-time round the 12 guy. Uh, you remember names like Jesse Stafford, maybe, or Josh Kremar, who's on the 12. Kevin Hoy, who's in the NCAA Finals. Frohart, who is an All-American. Um, those guys, you know those names if you're a wrestling fan, but what you don't know is those guys are still serving our country today and they're kicking butt and they're making a huge impact in the world that they live in, you know, and it's like, if you're seeing stuff on CNN about what's happening in Afghanistan, Air Force wrestlers are making an impact there. So I think that's, that. those are the stories and, and, and those are some of the wrestling names, but the guy you've never heard about is Vance Hawk. All right, Vance Hawk walked onto our team he was never, he didn't even qualify for the state tournament in Colorado, and he is doing amazing things for our country in the Air Force as a combat rescue officer. So I think those are the success stories um, that these guys, and there's a few seniors behind me, and we're about, you know, with May, May's graduation, and May they're going to pin on second lieutenant bars, and then six months from now, they're going to be making a difference in the world we live in. And some of it's going to be in Afghanistan, and some of it's going to be in, in Haiti delivering human, humanitarian stuff like that. So that, those are the success stories. And then we have some, you know, there's some war stories, you know, but, I, you know, me not being the guy that lived that out, it, it wouldn't be right if I told that story. But we have some incredible graduates, some guys that came before us, and some people that, you know, paid the ultimate price for our country that were part of this Air Force wrestling program. Your roster, your starting lineup, you got guys from all over the country. Yeah. What goes into recruiting for you? You know, recruiting is really about finding the right guy, you know, and it's, a, you know, for us, you know, we are a unique institution, but it's a, it's a big net, we cast a wide net, you know, so we're everywhere, we talk to everybody, and we're looking, you know, we are trying to be a competitive Division One Big 12 wrestling program, so we try and market and find the best wrestlers in the country, educate them on the opportunity, and, um, get them on our campus to see who we are, what we do, and the opportunities we can provide for them. And once we get them there and they see it, and they meet our team, and they understand like who you get to be around, who the brothers are, who the guy on the left and who the guy on the right are that you could be fighting for. Um, if they weren't thinking about service academies, they usually are by the time they leave. Um, so recruiting is, it's a process, you know, it's, it's probably, our list is a lot bigger than most other institutions. Um, going into official visits, we're, you know, 5,000 letters, 250 questionnaires, 100 guys that's on the final list, 50 of those that we're going to look at for official visits, 30 of those guys coming for official visits to get 12 Air Force, uh, you know, future cadet athletes. When you, uh, you look at your job and where you're at now, what are, what are some of the things that have surprised you? You didn't know about Air Force that you learned since you've been on the job? Yeah, it's a tough question, you know. Um, 
I think what surprised me is just you know how you know I did, I grew up you know I, I grew up wrestling here in Northeast Iowa and that, wrestling was your life. You didn't have other things. You didn't you didn't balance things very well. You know, so I think you know I'm really impressed with our cadet athletes, the guys on our team, that they can balance 18 to 21 credit hours with leadership, and that they can still work and commit the same amount of time that you know I did or the athletes I coached in the Midwest do. There's no difference in how we train our guys and how they train and their commitment to the sport. They just balance these other things. So that's that's another thing. Um, I was surprised at um, you know how how you can get caught up in the impact of what you guys do when they graduate and how you can you know like you go to sleep every night, you put your head on the pillow and you feel safe because you know who you know you know who's standing on the wall protecting you protecting us, who's protecting my wife, who's protecting my daughter, and uh, you know, that part of it, and, like, and how there truly are 18 to 22 year olds that have the capacity to make the right decision every time. It's not, it's not a flip of the coin. They make the right decision. They do the right thing. And for my family, my daughter especially, to grow up and be around that, like, I didn't understand the impact it was going to be to raise a family at the United States Air Force Academy. and. Um, that part's going to be incredible. It's incredible for me. It's going to be ex extremely impactful for my, for my daughter. You're wearing an Air Force RTC long sleeve here. What it, has that done for your program? What, you know, being there in Colorado Springs, having Bill Zadick and Kevin Jackson and Joe Russell and all the athletes that come and go through Colorado Spring at the Olympic Training Center. What does that do for your program? What's that partnership like? You know, excellence breeds excellence, you know. So our guys are pursuing excellence in a lot of different other areas. Wrestling's a piece of that. But when you can be around world champions like David Taylor, Kyle Dake, Jaden Cox, who's in our room on a regular basis, Bill Zaddock, Joe Russell, you know, world champion Kevin Jackson. So when you have excellence around excellence, you know, the product of that is excellence. So I think the RTC, um, you got to have one to be competitive uh, in this landscape of Division One wrestling. And we have arguably, I think, one of the best ones, you know, because of the access to the OTC, the access to the coaches that we have, um, and what it's bringing to our program. We have the All Air Force team that works with us. We have our prep school that works with us. We have the Olympic Training Center, the EAP program. So the young guys like Aaron Brooks, they train with us and work with us. So our guys are getting to train and work with world-class athletes, you know, from this you know, young age all the way up to the senior level. And uh, I think when you see, when you look at how Jaden Cox approaches the sport and he comes in, he's working out with Anthony McLaughlin and the RTC, there's going to be an impact there and it's incredible. It brings Dustin Kilgore to our program uh, as a full-time RTC coach, as a volunteer coach. So, you know, our, having NCAA champions on your uh, coaching staff is, you know, that's not, there's not a lot of those guys out there either. So we have one of those. And him living that lifestyle, sharing it with our guys. And then finally, we've been able to put together this board of directors. It's incredible people. Incredible people from different walks of life in wrestling that have got to, you know, support Air Force Wrestling. They support uh, our country. Uh, they support Colorado Springs. Um, and our board of directors, and they want to re re remain anonymous for the most part, but uh, it's, they're just an incredible group of people. Anything else for us? I uh, just appreciate what you do, appreciate our partnership with Track Wrestling, a world-class platform. You know, we know, I know some of the people in the organization personally, and they're just, they're some of the best. And, you know, what, what's going on with, with uh, Track and NBC and Sport Engine, you know, we're just feel, we feel like it's a great partnership. Again, we feel like we're about excellence. We know Track Wrestling, Sport Engine is about excellence, and, and we're just thrilled to be partnered.